microneedling, a beauty procedure that everyone has heard about and some of you might have even done it. And you can also do it at home. But are these at-home devices even worth it? Let's find out. Hey guys, my name is Bahar and I'm excited about sharing my knowledge and personal experiences about skincare with you. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you too can join our community. Microneedling is a procedure where you poke the skin with thousands of needles over and over again. And it sounds terrifying. If it sounds so bad, why do people do it? Well, by causing trauma to the skin, you will induce collagen production, which will help with wrinkles, stretch marks, acne scars, or any type of scars that you may have, and it will help with melasma. On top of that, it is safe for everyone to use. Well, not everyone. There is a type of hyperpigmentation called post-inflammatory pigmentation, where your skin gets darker after experiencing trauma. And unfortunately, this is more common in darker skin tones. But it doesn't mean that you can't get microneedling done on your skin because it doesn't mean that you will get it. It may not be completely safe, but it is safer compared to other treatments like lasers. Unfortunately, because of the heat that lasers will produce, there is a higher chance of you getting this type of pigmentation after doing that treatment. On top of the benefits that I already talked about, by punching holes into your skin, you will prepare your skin to better absorb all of your skincare products. By creating those holes, your skin will well, absorb those skincare products in a much deeper level, which will in return be much more beneficial for your skin. When doing this procedure at a clinic, the dermatologist will clean your face, open a brand new needle, emphasis on brand new, and adjust the needle depending on the concern that you are doing this procedure for or the part of the face that you want to get this procedure done. The needles can go from 0.5 millimeters to 8 millimeters, which is very excessive, but they normally won't go above 2 millimeters, so don't worry about that. But when it comes to at-home treatments, it's a completely different story. When it comes to at-home treatments, one of the most popular devices to use is a blade roller, just like this one. These can actually be a double-edged sword. They can be very beneficial for your skin or they can cause major harm if you don't know what you're doing. So let's talk about it. If you are thinking about doing this procedure at home, there are a few things that you need to keep in mind. First off, make sure that the blade roller that you are getting is not above 0.5 millimeters. This is a one millimeter, which is a little bit high, but still. Do not go above a 0.5 because if you don't know what you're doing and you use a, well, longer needle, you are going to cause serious harm to your skin and we don't want that. Second of all, do not use microneedling, whether it's in the clinic or at home, over active acne that is just going to make your acne worse. And third, make sure that your hands, your face, and your tool are all sanitized and clean because we don't want you to get an infection. So yeah, keep that in mind. Now, the reason that I said that blade rollers are a double-edged sword is because when you use them, they will drag your skin with it, which can cause harm if you don't know what you're doing. And considering the fact that I saw a lot of people go crazy when using this device on their skin, they caused major trauma to their face. So don't be that type of person. There is a specific way, a correct way, of using this device to avoid any further trauma to your skin and just the amount of trauma that the needles are supposed to give to your skin, not extra. Yeah? Before doing this procedure, you can use numbing cream on your face. You can leave it on for an hour, then wipe it off and completely clean your skin. A lot of dermatologists also do that if you ask them. So yeah, you can also ask them if you decide to do it at a clinic, but at home, make sure that you wipe it off completely and your face is completely clean. So is your hands and your tool. Now, when you want to use this device on your skin, just do it on a specific area first. For example, I want to do it on this part. Kind of 
stretch your skin a little bit. First, you can do it in a horizontal angle. You can go back and forth three times. I'm not actually using it on my face because I have makeup on, so <clears throat> just to clarify that. But you can uh, kind of stretch your skin a little bit and go one, two, three on this specific area and then go again one two three that's it don't go <laughs> on your skin because that's not the correct way to do it and you're just going to cause trauma to your skin so yeah keep repeating that procedure all over your face and avoid your eye area at all times well this Part is well self-explanatory it's your eyeball but your under eye area considering that it's a very sensitive well area and it is the thinnest skin on your entire body do not go over it with microneedling if you're not doing it at a clinic because no just just don't do it <laughs> The next tips that I'm going to share with you guys are for microneedling in general. It doesn't matter if you're doing it at a clinic or if you're doing it at home. These are just some things that you need to keep in mind. First off, it doesn't matter if you're doing it at a clinic with a very professional doctor or if you're doing it at home, you will experience some needle point bleeding. You're punching your skin with needles, obviously, so you're going to experience some bleeding, which is completely normal, so don't worry about that. Second of all, avoid anything dirty on your face, like dirty hands, a dirty phone screen, or even, I don't know, just randomly deciding to jump into a very dirty pond. I don't know why, but just, yeah. Because that can actually cause infections and you don't want that for your skin, obviously. And my last point is avoid any harsh ingredients like exfoliants or retinols because these already cause trauma to your skin and your skin is already traumatized. So avoid any harsh ingredients for at least a week just to make sure that your skin doesn't go through it, so to speak. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and click the notification bell so you can be notified every time I post a new video.